Good afternoon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming here today. You, we have a very august guest with us here today, and most of you know what the Life and Leadership Show is about. You know, I've sort of worked with so many leaders and CEOs and owners across the world, and there's so much to learn from them. So I just thought of this show because I felt that you know we're all leaders. At work, we lead our teams. At home, we lead our families. So this leadership is, you know, is always a mix about your actual life and your work life, and that's why we bring to you leaders here who can share with you a perspective of how they made a difference both at work and at home and in their personal lives. So without much ado, I'd really like to welcome uh, Kala Subramaniam here with us. Kala is the director and CEO of uh, Inam Asset Management Company, and she's based in Singapore. Welcome, Kala. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. So, you know, just to get started, maybe you can like you'd like to share a little bit about your journey in life. Uh, you know, where did you grow up? What did you study? How did you get to where you are today? So that it can serve as an inspiration for a lot of women. Uh, first of all, thanks, Murray. Thanks to you and team for giving me this opportunity. And good evening to all the viewers. Uh, I am Ms. Kala Subramaniam. I was born and brought up in Chennai um, from a middle class family. Father was uh, working in railways and mother was a homemaker. So I have a sister and a brother. As I said, schooling, uh, my college, everything, is in, um, everything was in Chennai. And those days, because I joined CA in 1992, <clears throat> those days only doctors and engineers were the profession you always hear about. But CA, not much you had heard about. Then people said CA means it's very difficult. So actually, that's what made me into. So I want to see what is that it is difficult. When people all say, so I always want to venture into a field where it was not tried before. So that were, made me to do CA. So I did in Deloitte, which is, was then it was a Fraser and Ross. You see one of the big four. Uh, that was my journey starting a chartered accountant. And when I completed that, so I thought like, why can't I be one of the first few women who can start the practice? Because those days you wouldn't have heard much women getting into practice or anything. As I said, CA itself was not known as now, as known now. Uh, but then, you know, again, it's a family life. Uh, so I got married. My husband is also a chartered accountant. So I come from a very conservative, traditional, um, cultural family, so where ethics and values are very important. It's, it's not to grow by any means. You grow with ethics and values. So I'm very proud of that. Today, I feel like where I am today, it's all that ethics, the values, the traditions, my culture has brought me to this stage. And thanks to my family, a wonderful uh, in-laws also I got. So my father-in-law was a um, lawyer. So my husband is a chartered accountant. So he was, also, he was working in an MNC and uh, from India, he got a transfer to move abroad. So we have lived in many countries, East Africa, South Africa, Vietnam, and finally moved to uh, Singapore. So we all been in, uh, I worked in uh, industries, like I was part of Emirates also, airlines. And then I was part of uh, Pure Light, the manufacturer, it's an Australian-based company. So I, I got an opportunity to work with uh, different culture, different countries and different nationalities. And that also gives you to adapt to any type of circumstances. And finally, as you know, I all, we, we say like what we are, we believe in God, right? Like when we go through the flow, we move to Singapore and we're currently working with uh, asset management. Superb. Excellent. Excellent journey there. But, you know, like you mentioned, all journeys are, are fraught with risk and reward. And uh, would you like to share, you know, some failures that you might have had in life and how you sort of dealt and, you know, moved ahead? Okay, see, uh, to me, uh, I won't say failures because we need to understand one thing. Everyone will have challenges in their life, right? And that's where we show our skill, our competency. So you cannot everything uh, you cannot have everything on the plate. So uh, to me, it's all the even the consequences and how do you look 
what is your effort it's it also matters so i would say challenges i won't say failures i never say failures it's challenges right and every challenges make you strong you learn uh, from it and you imbibe in it so i, I won't say that i've gone through very difficult period or yes for it i'm telling both personally and professionally because the graph can never be straight it is always up down up down right and as for the profession is concerned yes it's always been uh, going up and every job there are inherent challenges your position also because if somebody is sitting at that level every level there is a challenge that you have to face but every challenge as he said you face has made you stronger as you will also take the feedback you improvise i always say you need to embrace your shortcomings right and that's what you learn and move forward hmm yes yes of course but tell me in your life i mean generally you know have is something have you been impacted significantly by by anything as in something that's had a you know dramatic effect on your life maybe a book a mentor or uh, something that changed your life anything that you could relate to changed your life is that would be a sequence of events that has uh, 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 that has you know impacted me it's not one event as i say even persons right there are many well wishers uh, uh, who has pushed me they said no this is not the level go up go up like i am telling uh, either in my job or other professional associations because i said i am a chartered accountant even when in the uh, ca association there were people who said no you can go up go up when i said i'm not no i don't want to take that position because to me i'm not a position driven person because you always try to any work you involve i feel like it is a commitment and you give your full and you be happy because you have to be happy doing your work it is not just being a part of any organization so i don't want to go and join an organization just to say that i'm part of it unless i know that i can give my commitment and at the end of the day i have to feel happy so there were people yes who are pushing me they said no this is not you go up you can you have that so there were people who have done that if you say uh, books means there are three four books which really i have liked is shivik era you can achieve more uh, you can win and then uh, empires of the mind by dennis whitley and then good to great i think james collin if i remember yeah. and then the power of focus right and these are the books which has maybe influenced you and also i want to tell my mother and my mother in law they are my role models mm-hmm. because or my father in law father because i have seen them very active okay i have never seen them any time complaining always wearing that smile doing that work with that sincerity so i said this is what and what is that we are complaining of right so and then if you see about i like swami vivekananda i read his books uh savarkar savarkar actually how i came to know because when i went to andaman he was in a solitude jail until that i didn't know then later on i read about him and then subramanya bharatiya see i come from chennai is a very great courageous poet to me is a visionary leader who has written that time okay about what an india should be or connecting rivers so you know when when you read about this visionary leader you get inspired hmm hmm no no so obviously very wide range of books and uh, role models that you've had uh, so that's really great but tell me now you worked for so many years and you worked in different countries right what are the kind of challenges you faced as a as a lady uh, you know dealing in a man's world primarily uh okay uh, see when i said when i lived in different countries the culture is very different okay so first is when you get into any job you you need time to settle down right the six months or so understanding the culture is very important like is yes, we all say men and women are equal but each country varies right so and uh, the nationality the way they look that varies so you need to understand that and uh, some people feel whether we are overshadowing them 
right so we are uh, uh, taking over them it is not actually taking over them so it it's it's also we have to give that comfort hey no i'm here only as a friend right and we are here to support so that type of challenges i think women faces because there are some who cannot accept or to be to report to you mm-hmm. right either it could be in terms of experience or in terms of age or in terms of they say like oh reporting why should i report to her all right so this because the thing is i always say that so that time we have to give the comfort to him see here it is not like a sort of reporting right it's because of the job position you are in and the responsibility you take so other one everyone need to understand the authority and responsibility is so extensive you cannot expect only authority without a responsibility right so at that's why is understanding the culture understanding your team that is very important and these are the challenges but what i will say is keep doing your work people will understand initially right your your way your style because everyone has a style of uh, dealing with the team talking to the people so keep continuing your work people will understand you maybe initially first you cannot expect them to understand you immediately but over the period of time definitely people will understand you and get the cooperation mm okay so very nice so you mentioned about where people might have had challenges reporting to you and and uh and, but tell me you know one is this is on the reporting side but to actually uh prove yourself right which is actually going up the ladder right what all did you have to do do you feel that you had to work more than some of the male colleagues that you had or just to prove yourself uh okay uh, personally i am not a very gender biased person because i don't say that male and uh, or men and women the reason being wherever i worked i always been the only female in the team or maybe maximum two because the as i see as a part of a senior management it's like less number of females representing in a senior management so it's i always been one i always say maybe that is my rashi it's always one or maximum two right so uh, coming to your question you are asking whether what are the, the challenges i had been working with them is that what you yeah no what i'm saying is you talked about one challenge but with- people reporting. reporting to you right that was managing people below i'm talking about when you trying to go up the ladder right how how difficult is it for 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 women and ladies and did you have to do anything extra you felt or how was it in your case okay it is not extra it is how you demonstrate your ability to me like if you demonstrate right your ability the hard work and i think most of the organizations they don't look male or other as i said men or women and if they see that the required competency the skill is there and mainly hard work i think without hard work uh, there is no success that i can definitely vouch because you need to work hard you put efforts and have that grit that's very important right because because of the challenges you cannot withdraw and i say no no i cannot handle this project it is very difficult yes we do have the family but how do you manage it and balance it is very important there are some days yes you have to sit late or work late in the night but again if you want to see that growth you have to put that efforts right nothing comes very easily as i said without efforts or hard work so you need to put that hard work continue the efforts and that's what make you to stand out you need to demonstrate that okay okay so would you like to give me an example of how you might have demonstrated you know uh, your capabilities uh, you know at a certain level which got noticed yes uh, for example this company you know like we uh, when uh, initially like we had that offer documents which we Uh, always visit once in two years or three years. It's a big exercise, right? And when you see like one of your uh, colleague is leaving the job, right? Maybe that is not your area, or you say it is not in your job profile. But how you come forward and take it that time because you need to complete the work, mm. and 
that's so i have even i think what till midnight or 1 am to have a, a discussion with my team also right to complete it because we had a certain deadline to complete that mm. right so that is one example that is how then you don't say oh this is not this is not in my job profile i will not do this right mm. but sometimes you have to and that's where they say you step in say okay you are ready to take that responsibility mm 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 okay so that is when another one is whenever the budget comes you see there are always changes that happens so we all have offshore funds right and there were certain things which uh, we also have to change for our company because of the budget that got released and it was uh, we had a very only one month deadline so that time how you do it within the one month deadline period how do you put the extra effort or the time it requires demand more time and effort from you so these are the cases like examples where you have shown that you have done that finished it it's it's not only let me tell you it is just not completing but you you cannot compromise on the quality also that's also very important hmm. right so when it is seen and that's where you demonstrate like how you can well execute the work and that's how the trust is developed right over the years yes yes so you talked about hard work you talked about quality of work you know but sometimes there comes a stage at let's say a certain middle management level where everybody who is there or all the managers are working hard all of them are of a certain quality but yet as that pyramid happens only few get ahead you know what do you think makes the difference uh, in becoming and reaching a level where you are uh, you know what would have made the difference for you uh, i think the difference if you ask from me the confidence uh and uh, definitely the courage because i have stepped forward right to say yes i will handle this i will deal with this i can complete as you say yes everyone is competent you say there are a lot of people who is competent why few is moving forward is uh that that uh, quality the noticeable quality right that you demonstrate and mm. which the management notices right otherwise everyone is doing the routine job correct yeah. so when there is anything that job comes like as i say with a deadline you see sudden project coming up so but again there is a deadline which you need to so that time how do you participate and say take that uh, lead and say yes i will complete it okay So great this is something that you see now if you know at, at your level if you were to get it, give advice to mid level managers in today's day and age because i'm trying to tell you you know we all started a long while ago right uh what advice would you give to mid level managers to come up the ladder middle level managers so uh, j- this is again just my with experience and what i interact with uh see people are having expectations right from the middle level they always want whether in terms of monetary or in terms of position you know that is fine because that is natural to have but at the same time uh, don't look at the clock on work okay there are times you need to spend uh, more time also you need efforts and then come forward take ownership that's very important see if you don't take ownership of the work you do then you cannot expect to progress right oh this is not oh, i didn't do this this is not my fault it's okay it's, mistakes happen absolutely it is fine so taking ownership is very important so think like you are like an entrepreneur if you are the owner of this company how will you do and this what will make you help to move forward okay great so what i heard was take ownership don't look at the clock right be uh, be the owner of the company <laughs> as if it's yours great i think this is a lot of great advice for a lot of people uh, today who are coming in and uh, you know during our career very often things don't go well and whether it's a challenge right and you're dealing with it uh, so how important do you think resilience is and you know give us a situation where you showed some resilience in your corporate career and you had to come up what would that be 
see resilience is what how do you come up you know from the difficulty and one uh, we have seen in this last uh, two years right in the covid and that's the perfect example i think for the yeah. the whole world what resilience is right many companies suffered uh, they have to slash their employees profit plummeted there were a lot of uh, you know challenges a lot of the companies were going and this is where exactly the resilience works so difficulties do happens it is not it is not only for you and especially this last two years it is for the whole world it this has happened so from it to come as i said yes do not lose the hope right you, you need to be positive and you need to strategize like what are the alternative solutions we have how we have a plan maybe first that time when the covid start we didn't know that okay we thought maybe six months one year but then it extended to two years so we know that vaccination is going to take time and eventually we all got the vaccination so have a, a plan maybe a two years plan then extend it to another three years strategize and this difficulty yes uh, you know you you have to come out of this as i said with the positive um, attitude positive attitude is very important and with the hope and work out on the alternative solutions and come back Hmm. So I heard. Look at alternative solutions. Uh, you know, work out what different strategy. Revisit your strategy, strategy. because yeah. it cannot be the same as what you had before. Because That's things right. have changed. Now change is dynamic, right? Yes, yes, yes. So okay, so great. Now tell me a little bit about uh, you know we we heard a lot of conversation about executive presence. You know, how do you make your presence felt? Uh, you know where at senior levels when you've had to work and what have you what is what are your views on executive presence see uh, first let me understand what what do you say like when you say executive presence because and, and these are the people like invested in the organization in the organization goals and that people right when you say the executive presence so they have to understand and continuously grow and develop within the leadership position they are also aware of the role in creating and uh, uh, maintaining company culture for example you take our company okay it's a very culture oriented company we have socially ethical uh, investing we don't invest in tobacco we don't invest in alcohol that is our culture so when uh, then what happens is you will become more competitive in this field when you have the executive presence against the competitors actually this is a differentiating factor between high performing organizations and the competitors so you you need to invest yourself understand the goals in organizations and understand the people so mm-hmm. this is important for every you know i am telling at a ceo levels so that executive presence or say i said i am a ceo ceo of the company so this is important as you need to invest and grow with the organization goals and mm. with the culture okay great so tell me as a coo what exactly are the responsibilities you you handle see coo you know in any organization the chief operating officer right it is a very responsible position next to the ceo so in my company uh, here what happens is we all have a, a small fund so i i handle the operations i handle the finance and then compliance uh investor relationship it is for the whole company right and uh, this finance and all like yes some of the jobs we have outsourced right and and then in the absence of uh, ceo how will you handle it in the company how do you run the company how do you do the uh, client uh, relationship management because we are a fund client relationship is extremely important at the same way being compliant That's right true. the compliance landscape is ever changing ever changing if you see in the last 6 uh, 7 years even including india sebi has brought a lot of changes right whether it it, it could be the a treaty with uh, the countries or the taxation treaty so how you be compliant this is also very important it mm-hmm. just not seeing the profits 
right? Good corporate governance is very important. Today we speak of Tata, right? So there are companies, I don't, you know, that there are companies which is very well known for governance, compliance. So that's very important for a company, just not only to have revenue numbers, but also to have good corporate governance. And that's where you create the trust and the goodwill. Mm -hmm. Very true. Especially if you're a finance company, at, you know, at the end of the day. Yes, we are into asset management. Yeah. So controls and compliance become very uh, important. Right. So tell me, I mean, uh, you know, as, as a leader, right? So there are many in your business, especially in the finance field, a lot of them are CAs. You know, so. A lot of them are CAs where, sorry? As a lot of them are chartered accountants. Okay. In, in, in the finance area, normally when you're there, right? So you're either an MBA finance or a chartered accountant, etc. So, you know, again, what separates uh, and to have gone through any of these competitive exams, you would have, uh, you know, demonstrated hard work, you know, a certain quality of work, etc. So what really differentiates people really at the top? Uh, see, one is qualification. When you say qualifications, right? I want to tell you, by just having the qualifications, uh, you don't reach that level. See, qualification is only what, it's a technical knowledge. What we learn, suppose an engineer or a doctor, right? Or a CA, that's a technical, we learn technical. And what you need is a competence. How do you apply? So that is very important, right? How do you apply? How you are analytical? All that qualifications, yes, it's, it's an, that is what we learn, but how do you apply is more important. And what makes that difference there is who applies you, whether you have the competence to apply. And which will, what will happen is how do you learn that? See, as, that's why when you say, as soon as you come out, say at the age of 23, 24, you cannot expect to be a CEO of the company, right? I'm telling like, that's what I tell people. First start at a lower level because you have to learn. Everything is new. What you study theoretically and how you apply practically is different. And you learn, you experience. What is that experience? You imbibe. See, you can learn, but whether you imbibe, that is important. Mm -hmm. right? How do you imbibe? And then internalize it. So what makes the cream difference is your competence. How you the, with the skills, the skill that, that you have acquired, one is the qualifications and the skills you have acquired by working or facing through the challenges and that your competence which make to reach that level and your that qualities or the traits you see. Mm. Okay. So it's the application and uh, of the knowledge in the situation that you're referring to which makes a difference. Okay. Uh, great. One of the things you mentioned was, you know, you worked in different countries and, and different jobs. So tell us, you know, how did you use your skills and how did you move from industry to industry and, and what were the challenges that were involved? Okay. So why I moved, I want to tell you. It's because my husband's job was transferable. And I was very clear because see, if your family has to be together and when I got married, so I was, we had to be together, right? There is no point. My husband being in one place, which I don't want to. So I want to be in place. I said, okay, fine. Because whenever he uh, moves, I was also leaving and then moving to another country. And it was it was challenging for me whenever I got a new job because they asked again another three, four years you're going to be, right? So that was challenging. And yes, as I said, I worked in the airline industry because the airline industry, though the finance base could be same, but industry is different. So what I did when I was in airline industry, I did IATA. I studied that. Uh, see, having one professional qualification alone is not enough when you want to move up, right? So yes, though I studied uh, a CA from India, I'm also a cost accountant from India. So when I know that when I moved to airline industry, so what could that I study that could help me to do better in my job? Right, so I did IATA, uh, which is like associated with the airlines. I did all the four exams to help me to do it because it's a different industry. 
on the next industry i moved it they are the manufacturing of lights pr light it's a very uh, famous brand in australia so i, I have i learned i took that manual i learned even every, each part of the light because i was sitting in factory right i need to because when i uh, converse with uh, the, your clients or when you converse with your team you need to have the knowledge and a very important when you are working in the company you should know your product very well it is not that you say only sales person need to know what is all the product you may not know go to the nitty gritty but you need to have the knowledge of the product mm-hmm. what you have to and only then you get confidence to speak right or to contribute say in a team discussion when you know the product very well and only then you can contribute so i learned i used to go through the manual so uh, with the factory manager because i was sitting in a factory i was also a director there so i used to sit in the factory so these were the challenges where when you move to a different industry you have to learn and for me i sit in a different country where right? the culture was very different initially when you move you are new right people may not share all the information with you it's because it's not that they do not want to because they you are also new into the system until you get settled sometimes people are hesitant to share all the information and these are the challenges you face okay when you get into the company so first is you have to bring them into your confidence right and then you have to develop the team and if you see yes there are systems and processes which need to be improvised you have to do that for that it could be possible when you interact with people you have to go and interact with the departments to have a good processes good system good internal control hmm. so uh, the, then next uh, i i was working in bank as well for some time and that was a different experience you know bank it's humongous right in volume everything so these are the challenges uh you face like when you move and you have to learn from whichever industry you are moving and then you when i moved to singapore you know singapore is a financial hub it's all here only the fund management everything so then i did exams with mas i did my cp australia here which could augment or mm-hmm. help me so kala you were talking about you know what i heard was winning trust understanding the industry and uh, you know being able to contribute so you sort of equipped yourself and you studied a lot uh, you know whichever industry that you were now you also mentioned that you did your cpa in australia all over again tell us a little bit about that journey i mean you know that must have been after how many years yes uh, that is i cleared in 95 96 my ca that's at the same time i cleared my cost accountancy and then i think in 2004 i did my iit so this uh, was in 2013 uh, 13 i did cp australia because when i moved to singapore right so my husband he he likes to study all the time okay so i used to tell him once in a few keep studying don't keep me <laughs> whatever you do because he loves studying keep writing exams so uh, then i said enough for me but this cp australia was my choice so when i came here so i thought what i could do to value add as i said right every country varies and you need to see what to value add in terms of your job right and in terms of you your self betterment also correct so then uh, when i was uh, talking to few people about cp australia because this exams is very different from what i did in uh, ca right it's very application oriented and i enjoyed it it's all like they give the case study okay the case study even they post it even uh, uh, i think 10 days before the exam so from the very analytical so i like very analytical subjects right you give the case study and then how you will react it's what's about if i could remember now also the case study came to me was about a bottle industry in australia at that time why it was declining and then there was a case about us scam that time it has happened in the stock market so they give that uh, practical case and how you will uh, apply right mm-hmm. so that what made to me 
to enhance, to value add, and also for the self betterment. That made me to study yes, CP Australia. And as I said, I enjoyed reading because it's very different. And here you know that in CP Australia you can open the book, but we all come from a system where we don't see the book, right? So I didn't use my book since we have been used to our system of not seeing the book. Uh, so I'm telling this is a very open book system. So people can keep the book open. The reason being why they say keep because it's an analytical, right? So what you're go going to apply from the principles you have studied, you're going to write the exam. So that's what made me to do the CPO state. Amazing, amazing. So you've actually upgraded your skills. That's what I'm I'm noticing. With every industry, you upgraded your skill. You made yourself more relevant. And uh, I think that has also been instrumental in, uh, in you moving ahead uh, in your career. So great. I mean, uh, you know, I'd just like to ask you, I mean, you know, at a, such a senior role that you're in and, you know, you have a home and I guess you have kids and a family. So how do you manage to balance the uh, responsibilities? Uh, yes, when the kids were small, it was really challenging. Uh, it wasn't uh, that easy. I said when the kids were small, right? So uh, then, see, how do you think this? You, you don't think that as an additional work. That's what I keep telling you. Because this is also part of you, right? This family is also part. When anything I believe, when you think it is an additional work you're doing, then you feel it is a burden. But this is also, uh, you know, you're waiting. The end of the day, I know your children is waiting for you to come home, cook and do the dinner, right? So, and that's where, you know, you, you are also happy to do that for them. Initially, yes, I had helper, but once my daughter it was like nine years, I said, okay, she can manage herself. And uh, this was, uh, I, I mean, it was, we were in Singapore, right? When she was nine, I said, okay, she can manage. And then I said, now we all manage the things by ourselves. And family is also supportive. In that way, I have to thank my husband or my children. So they always supported my career or wherever I am associated with. And I want to tell you, the last two years, I have devoted more time for their CHR. And I have to thank my family. Because uh, sometimes even I sleep four, five hours in the night. You know, when you have to manage everything. But end of it, what you get that satisfaction, right? And that is more important. So mm. that happiness uh, you get. So it is difficult. I won't say no. Uh, but sometimes, yes, you think that uh, you're on your personal work, what do you think that you want to complete today? It may take, get postponed by one, two days. But that's fine. But uh, then you balance it. And also, uh, to me, you should not neglect the family because the children need you. Hmm. it's very important I always say that you don't teach children they see you and then they learn they're perceptible right What? so that's very very important for me that I want to give them uh, you know the culture because I said I come from a traditional culture background and ethics and values are very important in life I am a strong believer of that and that's what I want my children also to see us and learn. Mm -hmm. You know that I said like I'm a strong believer in God. So uh, mm -hmm. all prayers, all, all I, I don't miss any of our traditional functions. Either it is Navaratri or Diwali, I celebrate everything. Okay. So great. I think it's, uh, you know, you're, you're uh, setting the bar quite high for a lot of uh, women <laughs> now. <laughs> and you know that you Manage to perform at work, at home, plus the traditions, etc. Which uh, today I think a lot of people are finding very difficult to uh, to manage all 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 three sides. Of I it. want to add that immediate if you allow me. See, I tell you, we are all the ambassadors of our culture. If today you and me, right? If we don't do that, then how will our I expect our children to know? Right? What is Diwali or what is Navaratri or what is Krishna Jit? I'm just giving an example. Hmm. Right? How do they know? So I always feel we are all the ambassadors, right? We have to carry this uh, the, the right spirit 
be positive. See, all this, why we do to spread the positivity, positive energy. When you do this, you are happy, right? To create a good environment. Uh, see, I, I even put rangoli in my house because in our uh, tradition, you have to have rangoli in the, the house, in the front of your house. Till date, I do that. I don't miss it. Mm. So this is what it's all to you know it's a it, it brings you the positive energy positive aura right the aura around you is nice. Hmm. No, it's great. It's great to hear that uh, you know from leaders today because uh, some of uh, a lot of this is a bit of a dying tradition now. As in you know as people move overseas and there's no help and they get uh, so it's very nice to hear that you're. Uh, uh, you know, you're, you've been able to manage all three sides, which is which is very difficult uh, for a lot of people. So great, great to hear that. Uh, but tell me one more thing in terms of your own, you know, we're all different people and we all evolve a personal style of leadership. How would you describe yourself as a leader? Myself as a leader, um, I, um, if you ask, I mean, myself, right, my traits or the, right, I'm a, very confident and a courageous person. I think the grit and the courage has brought me to this level. And uh, I speak openly. So I should not be, you know, people should be telling that, but since you're asking me, I'm, I, I'm a very straightforward person. So wherever it is, I think that has also helped me because I say, I, I, I always say it is better, whatever it is, to tell to the person directly. Hey, like if I say that, maybe I'm not happy with what you have done. Maybe can we change this? Right? It's better to talk with the person and uh, get it solved rather than going and telling about Moody to somebody else and say, oh, I'm not happy. So I feel it is better to tell that person directly and whatever it is, solve it with that person. Right? If you're going to bring a solution, it's well and good. Or if you feel that you're not finding any amicable solution, uh, you know, time is the healer. Just be quiet for some time, then you get it done. So I am I'm always a very open person. And some people would have found like I this is what I heard, like, oh my god, she's too open. Right? Mm -hmm. First people hearing it, they think, oh, she she tells it so openly. I mean, this is what uh, I have heard, you know, the feedback, like, but later on they realize, yes, she's like that. And as I said, people will virtually understand that, oh, her personality is that. Mm -hmm. And to me, confidence and courage is important. You know, that word describes you. And I, I feel that was has brought me also here. Great, great. So courage, confidence, grit, openness, I think being straightforward uh, are some of the things that uh, clearly define uh, uh, Kala, right? Uh, and I think what an appropriate name for, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for, for the qualities that you uh, embody. And uh, tell me a bit about your personal life, right? To manage all these things, right? Would require a certain amount of discipline in your life, right? Do you have some routines that you, you know, follow or practice or something that can, that you'd like to yes. share for yeah. people to follow? Sure. What I do in my work, Every day in the morning, right? I write what I have to complete that day. So there will be a lot of work. I prioritize, right? Prioritize depending on what is what is the requirement because there are many departments who want the details or their meetings. So I write. I always do that. I write. And then I say in the morning, which one I should complete today, which one I should answer, which one I should reply. Because to me, any person contacting me, this is the discipline I've followed. Either in email, I will reply to them. First, you see, I always acknowledge it, reply. Even with you, what I like, and Mudita, I told you is, when I saw in the LinkedIn, see, you acknowledge everything, and, and that is nice, right? If somebody is sending us an email, it could be important for him, right? So at least reply. If you're going to take time, you say, give me two days. I will revert to you on Wednesday. Suppose you're receiving it. So that I try to do, that discipline I follow. Maximum, I try to reply the same way even on the phone. Nowadays, you know, it's all more of on WhatsApp. I try, even if I miss in the morning, evening. First is work. work. During work, I give importance only to work. So I see that 
I don't put on hold anyone. Work-wise, I do that. And on the personal side, also in the night, I come and uh, uh, write what all the things that I have to do. Because personal work, you do it. So in the weekend, you have to. And also, I do a reflective process. This I started very much of. A reflective process in the sense is about you, right? Today, you have done that action. So what is that? Either anything that I have to improve. Okay, I have spoken. But how this meaning has been conveyed to others? Is there anything I need to improve on my side going forward? Is there anything that I have to beef up? So this I do. Nowadays, I'm doing the reflective process a lot. And taking, see, there are things, everything in the world that we need to understand. Every battle will not be fought. Right? You, we can control ourselves, but we cannot control others. We need to understand that. So there will be provoking situation. There will be people triggering it. But how we respond is more important. So uh, don't react. This is all I keep telling to you. Even if there is a message, take three hours, four hours to think about it. And then if you see immediately when you reply, you will start reacting. Right? And you have tried this also. Take three, four hours. Then think. You will you'll give a better response. Yes. So, as I said, not every battle will not be fought. Mm -hmm. Don't take everything too like hard. Because sometimes people tell in anger, if they don't really mean it. Because when in anger, right? So, these are the things which I have taken uh, the, the learning in all these uh, recently. And also, I see the reflective of what I have spoken or Self-assessment, that's very important, right? Every day, like what I have done. So I have done anything productive or whether I need to uh, step up. So this I do. Okay, great. So I heard you plan your day, you prioritize. Not every battle is to be fought and take your time to respond. Uh, some of the things that you... When uh, it is a triggering or... A, see, take time only when it is a triggering or a provoking message. Hmm. Not necessary. The next minute you need to respond, right? Yes. Your mind takes time to settle down. Yes, yes. So that's excellent. From a you know, and and of course you also talked about a reflective process that you have brought in, where you think about the actions and you know the things that you do and uh, things like that, right? So that's that's a uh, very uh, that's great. So just coming across to. You know, as part of your reflection process, uh, you know, what do you think about what your opinion about, let's say, uh, you know, building self awareness? Self awareness is very important because you need to uh, understand your actions, okay, your traits, your qualities, and what you speak. Because understand what you speak is going to impact others, right? You may feel it is right. That is right from your angle. But is it right from their angle? As I said, you know, uh, many times where the confusion is, because people have perceptions. Your perception and my perception may not be same. And that's where the conflict happens. So the self-awareness is important in terms of what you talk, okay, how you react and your actions. So there are basic traits of us which we cannot change, right? Everyone has a basic quality that will not that we cannot expect to change because we have to be ourselves. I always say, be yourself. Be very important. Even I, I like to move with the people who are by themselves, right? You cannot be artificial. You cannot be fake, right? You cannot tolerate the fake smile on an artificial smile on an artificial speech for a long time. So you are comfortable only when people are themselves. So I always say, you know, we, we say we believe in God. He is our boss. Another boss is inside, inside us. Mm -hmm. I always follow this principle. I may be telling to Mudit, thinking that Mudit has believed me. No, but there's a boss inside. He knows whether what I told is truth or not, right? So you answer that. And end of the night, that's what makes you, we say, no, sleep well. What do you mean by sleep well? When you are true, when you're two, you don't need to fear. 
So that's what uh, my policy and principle. So end of the day, you need to sleep well. Be true to yourself and be true to what you do. Excellent. Right? So, so that that I uh, I follow and I believe in that. As I say, be yourself. So God has made everyone differently, right? Uh, even we say fingers, five fingers are not same. It's all different. Each one have the different skills, different competences, and how to make the best of it is in us. So the self awareness is important. Like how, what, what you speak, what you act, right? How does it impact? So that is important. So that it, it gives only a positive impact. Mm. That's mm. very important. You need know, to create a positive impact. It's not that we don't get angry. We all get even I get angry. I'm not telling I don't get angry, but I've mellowed down what I was. Because over the periods, you have seen many things. Mm. Correct? And if I look back, what I think 20, 10 years ago, what I would have argued, now it looks maybe silly. Hey, why did I do that? And that's life, right? Over the years, you feel, oh, for this thing, it's just a small thing. Why can't we just leave it? Don't take it to your heart. Mm. And move on. Yes, yes, yes. So good. So a lot of maturity coming in there uh, with uh, with age and, and being able to reflect and actually, like you said, to be able to sleep well, you need to be, uh, you can sleep well when your conscience is clear and you know you've done your best. And uh, so that's great learning there. So Kala, besides your work, is there something else that you would like to do in life? You know, I mean, in terms of how would you, you know, you've, you've had a good hectic life and I, you still have a couple of good, very good years ahead. Where do you see yourself uh, in the future? What would you like to do? Uh, well, um, if you ask me, uh, I would like to be an achiever. Achiever is, see, we are all born, just born and do the work. No, something achieved, right? And that's what we are, you aim for it. One is achiever. Achiever in the sense is uh, you aim to go to a position and achieve that, right? Either it is professionally or in the associations you have associated with. And once you achieve that position, and after that, you see that you have, you have achieved that. And how could you use that opportunity to grow further? And as I said, nowadays, I get a lot of, uh, in the last maybe two years, I've been speaking in so many Right, and that's an opportunity for me. So, how do I see when I speak? I also learn because you also sit and prepare, yeah. right? So, that's a good learning for me as well. And uh, the other way is help others. Okay, I don't put as charity because everyone uses the word charity, 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 right? It can be monetary or non monetary. Help others as much as possible. I always say. Uh, help others. So whenever somebody asks me or approaches me, if I can, I always try to help and connect people. Right? Help others. Because that's what we are, to help each other. Live and let live. So enjoy the other people's growth also. Enjoy their happiness. Right? Another one, uh, I'm a dancer and I'm also an instrumentalist and a singer. So Dancing, yes, I've been doing continuously. I've learned classical dance and also I've done all genre of dance and used to dance and a lot of shows. So I think I want to revive my, again, my instrumental music. So the last two years I could not do much. So I want to achieve in that field in terms of music. Yes, dance, I've done many shows. So to Recently, I'm not be doing the last. I think the last one I did was in January, I believe. So even on the music side, I want to do something. Oh, amazing, amazing! So we have not just a COO, we have a dancer, a musician, right? We have an achiever. We have uh, many things in color. Somebody who likes to help others. Uh, so fantastic, uh, Kana! Thank you so much. I think we have reached the top of the hour and uh, I'd really like to thank you for all your time sharing your experience. And I really hope that 
uh, a lot of what you share is, you know, impacts a lot of the incoming generation. And, and, and I hope they take inspiration from the fact that, you know, just being a lady, uh, there's no gender bias and you can really go to the top. And let there be more COOs and CEOs like you. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Thank, thank you so much for giving this opportunity. And thanks to you and the entire team. And wish you all the very best. Thank, thank you. you so much.